Let me get this cough out of the way first. <coughs> Excuse me. You know what? I'm gonna mute my mic every time I have to every time I have to cough so you guys don't have to hear that because that's probably very, very annoying. But if you hear like long pauses, then I'm probably either coughing or I'm sneezing, one of the two. So let's go into this um first segment and talk about the Clippers collapse. So Yeah. I mean, if you're a Clippers fan, then this really isn't anything new to you. And you're sort of used to this outcome happening. But we'll talk about Dallas's side a little bit first. This is the first time that Dallas is actually able to get over that hump of beating the Clippers. Every single time that they've matched up against the Clippers, they've always lost in the first round. And But the one time that they didn't lose to the Clippers, they ended up making it all the way to the Western Conference Finals. So I think there are some great things in store for the Mavs um, in this postseason and they go up against the Thunder, so it's obviously not going to be an easy task. However, Luka and Kyrie, they've both shown that they're definitely talented to, and they're talented enough. And maybe their experience might be a little, might be the edge that they need when going up against this Thunder team that lacks experience. So, who knows exactly what could, who knows exactly what could entail with, um, with the series and, um, between Dallas and, uh, and OKC. <coughs> Excuse me. But regardless, um we the I'll, I'll look at the box scores. I might as well go ahead and look at the box scores of this game. So Luca ended the game with 28, 13 and 7. Kyrie ended the game with 30, 6 and 4. Okay, I did not have to sneeze there. Daniel Gafford ended the game with 13. And P.J. Washington ended the game with 14. Obviously, those two, um, the Luka and Kyrie Irving, they both played very, very well in this elimination game. And they capitalized on what they like what they desperately needed to capitalize, which was winning at home and closing out the series, avoiding playing Game 7 at, um, at L.A. And the Clippers, they... They did not play all too well in um in this game. Like the final score 114 to 101 and Harden he ended the game with 16 and 13. So with 7 rebounds. That sounds good. Except when you look at his field goal percentage where he shoots 5 for 16 and 0 for 6 from 3. And <coughs> Excuse me, but yeah, so five for 16 from the field, obviously that's really, really bad, and Paul George in this game, he had 18 points, but also was really bad shooting from the field, six for 18 from the field, and two for 10 from three. Terrence Mann ended the game with 14 points, and let's see, Evitza Zubox ended the game with 17 and 11 and Norman Powell off the bench ended with 20. And that was essentially all of the scoring that came in from the Clippers. Russell Westbrook, he ended this game 2 for 7 from the field with 6 points. And I... Hold on, just one second. <coughs> mm. Jeez, this is, not, this is not looking good for me. But regardless, this um, this Clippers team, I, or the Clippers as a whole, like the franchise, I don't know what it is, but they just cannot get over these. Um, they cannot get over the stipulation that they have. Like they, they they have to be cursed. There's no other explanation that I have other than that because it happens every single time to the Clippers. Every single time it happens to them. And they get better and better. And when you think they, like, finally can do it, they don't. And it's... I, I, don't, know, I don't know what the problem is. And what makes this, like... What makes this even worse 
is like how much they were hyped up in the regular season at one point. Like they were the favorites to match up against the the Boston Celtics right before they had their little um they had their little losing streak towards the end of uh of the regular season. And these this Clippers team was hyped up to be like a really really good team. Obviously, the fact that they didn't have Kawhi in this series might have uh changed the outcome a little bit. But the fact that they haven't had Kawhi or Paul George in a healthy playoff series since 2020 is very, very disappointing. Now, call it bad luck or call it, um, call call it bad luck. Call it Kawhi Leonard load managing. I mean, I I mean, I don't really think you could call it anything other than bad luck at this point because these injuries like that that's just bad luck and they always happen either during the postseason or right before the postseason for this Clippers so far like given their their recent history so like given their recent history in the Paul George and the Kawhi Leonard era (coughs) again not looking good for me right now and Jesus Christ it's getting worse Dear God. But regardless, this Clippers team, it's full of, not only is it, it's full of regular season players. Like, Paul George, regular, I'm, I'm sorry, like, I know there's a lot of Paul George fans, but lately, he's been a regular season player. James Harden, he's almost all, he's always been a regular season player. And that's no disrespect to James Harden. He's had very good performances in the playoffs. I'm not saying that he hasn't. However, every single postseason, his numbers drop. It's every single postseason. And every single postseason, he'll have a game like this. Or he'll have a game like how he had in game five. It happens every single time. Every single time with James Harden. And it also happens, like, re- quite recently, actually, it also happens every single time with Russell Westbrook. And I don't think Russell Westbrook helps this Clippers team as much as the Clippers fans say that he helps them. Like, sure, Russell Westbrook, he does everything else. He's like that Josh Hart for um for the Clippers, where he'll do all sorts of the dirty work. But the difference is that Josh Hart can somewhat score the basket like rather efficiently and obviously you know he'll have his games where he's not shooting very well but more often than not he'll give you a consistent like you know 15 or 16 points on pretty decent efficiency like really good efficiency meanwhile we have russ who was i can't even say that he was shooting tour dates because he took so many shots that that's not even a date on the calendar (laughs) but i saw a graphic where it showed Russell Westbrook was shooting like four for 36 from the field after game one. That is really, really, really bad. Like, horrible. And it does not help the team in the slightest because those shots that you're missing is just another possession that you're giving the Dallas Mavericks to score. And it's really like, it's... I I don't know how this happens to the Clippers every single time, but it's every single season. I cannot stress that enough, like, how often this happens, like, all the time. And how are they going to... I genuinely don't know how they're going to get over this hump of just losing in the postseason every single time. Because it's just... It's really not fair at this point for for these Clippers. It's like... It's inevitable for for them to ev- to to collapse. It, they're like the Cowboys in a sense, where it's like you expect them to fail. What can go wrong will go wrong, and that's what this franchise really is. Except the difference is that this franchise doesn't have championships to back up their greatness, and it's it's really bad. And it's like, when will the Clippers ever win a championship? When will the Clippers ever not disappoint their fans? When will the Clippers make the finals? Like, I don't know. Now, for the Mavericks, congratulations on the Dallas Mavericks. They finally made it out of the uh they finally made it out of the first round and they beat the evil 
the the evil Los Angeles Clippers team that has been beating them for the last um, well not not the last two years but it beat them for two years and they couldn't get over that hump and now they finally did and third time's the charm for Luca I guess but regardless like I feel like this team is just much better overall than than the previous teams that um, Luca has had in these postseasons and that's really like the main difference and especially Kyrie like being on the having Kyrie on the roster like I didn't at first I didn't think it was going to be a good idea because of Kyrie and his off-court stuff but when he isn't having any of those like on off the court problems he's a phenomenal basketball player and on top of that Luca's play style and his well not really his play style but Luca's sort of yeah, you know what? Yeah, Luca's play style, his playmaking, and his like his build. I don't want to say it's exactly like LeBron, but in the sense that they're both small forwards that can run the points, like they're both really tall point guards that bring the ball up and like create shots for the other team, create offense, all that kind of thing. They both do that exceptionally well. And Kyrie playing behind LeBron already knows how he needs to play behind Luca and. That meshes very, very well for this Clippers team. So with that, well, the Clippers team, Mavericks team, excuse me. So with that, we are out of time because I really have to blow my nose right now. And I want to take a little bit of a break to see if I can like fix this cough. And in the next segment, we're going to talk about Anthony Edwards and his 43-point game. So tune into that. I'll be right back after this short break. Feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the fake shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place, all this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it, the noose, if it's some loose shit, a stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? 